Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth with Coding Shorts. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit more esoteric. We're going to dive into bitwise operators and why they still matter in C-sharp. This means we're going to look at a little binary math, a little decimal math, and enumerations and flags and how they all work together and why you probably should still be using them. Let's get started. Let's start talking about math or maths. I've been watching way too many British shows during the uh, lockdown, so maths, math, either one. I'm going to start out by just running a CSI, which is the C Sharp Interactive Compiler. We can just, you know, write hello and it'll output hello, just using Rosalind to do C Sharp interactively. I'm going to say console.clear, give us a clean space to start with. I don't want to start thinking about numbers. I don't know this is all basic math, but we're going to get to the idea of why binary is important in a minute. If I just do one, of course I get one, and if I get nine, I get a nine. Not a big surprise. And what's interesting is we're dealing with decimal numbers here, right? And let's talk about how decimal numbers work. So if I do nine, I just get a nine, and what if I add one to a nine, right? I get a ten. But let's talk about what's really happening here. The nine itself is getting one added to it, which is flipping that digit over to zero and then carrying the one to the next column. Binary works very much like this. So I'm just gonna paste a quick little lambda function here that just converts a number to binary and shows it. I'm just gonna use this in a couple of ways. So if I say B with a one, it's gonna convert it into binary. Now the idea behind binary here is important. Because computers are binary, they can have ones or zeros. Each of these digits represents a base two, just like each of the digits of decimal represent base 10. So the two valid values of each of these digits is gonna be one or a zero. So what happens if we say one plus one? What happens? We're going to add one to that one digit and it's gonna reset it to zero because it's only base two, right? And then what happens? It's gonna carry the one. So that's how we know that two is gonna be one zero. So if we do something like go from zero to 15 in binary, what happens? We can see that it goes from zero, one, and then two, because that's the two place, just like we think about it as the 10 or hundreds place. And then this is the four place, eight place, et cetera, right? We can think about this as base two because we're talking about powers of two, just like in decimal, we think about powers of 10. But why does this matter? Why does understanding how this is actually stored matter? The reason it matters is that we want to be able to check individual digits of this. And what it allows us to do is take simple code we have that may have multiple kinds of properties and check them. Now you might be thinking, like I did for a long time, well, that's what just enumerations are for, right? So let's go look at some code instead. I'm gonna make this just a tad smaller. And I'm using some top level statements here. So if you may have seen my other video about it, just so we can write some simple code here. And I have a write function that is identical to our B lambda from before, just so we can use it. So if we take a value like 10, 10, right? And the B here is telling C sharp that this is going to be a binary representation after it, just like saying X gives you hexadecimal, et cetera. But we're going to really stick to binary. And so let's write that V. Let's go ahead and run this. And so what we'll see is we're taking this value of B and it's coming out there. And the reason I talk about this is what if we have another value like OB0100, right? So that's going to be the value of eight. So let's actually ignore these as this. Just say this is 10 and this is eight in decimal. So we're storing it that way. What if we add eight and 10 when we write them? We're going to get a larger number because it's trying to add all those together. But where this really becomes powerful is the idea of using logical operators. So let's talk about it. There's three logical operators that are important. Or, and, and XOR, or exclusive OR. So what are these really going to do? Remember that we have these representations of binary. And in binary, we can really see what OR and AND are going to do. So AND is going to only put a 1 in every column where they both have a common value. Or it's going to do the opposite, and that is, as long as there's a one, it's going to keep that one value. 
An exclusive or is going to keep the value as long as only one is true. So actually, let's change this to this value, right? Just so we can see both values. So this should return us a one zero for and. And this second one should return us a one one one, right? Because it's saying that either of these need to be true. And the exclusive or says only if one is true in one of them, not in both of them. So let's run this just so we can see this again. And we can see that the and only found the column where they had them in common. The or found all of the columns of the binary digits where there was at least a one. And the exclusive only did the ones where it was only true in one of them. If they both had it, it ignored them. So for numeric values, this may not seem like something that's awfully interesting or useful, and there may be some higher mass where this is going to be useful. But for me, where this really comes to terms is with when I wanted to store some value. So let's say I want to, let's leave those there so they continue to write. Let's create a new value where I want to say has AC equals true, var has breaks equals false, right? And so I take these values and I want to run some code if has AC do some work, right? Or if has AC and, and notice that this and is different from the bitwise operation and not has breaks, I may want to do some value here, right? Do some work. Now, this is a common place where you can start to use something like an enumeration. And we have one called features down here. We have breaks, radio, air conditioning, or none. And we could do the same thing. We could say has AC is features.ac and features.breaks. And then we could just check these, right? If has AC equals features dot AC and has breaks equals features dot breaks. And in this case, this could be just as well done with constants, right? You can have some constant that have this value and you'd be getting basically the same code. In fact, you could argue that enumerations make that more complicated, but often you want to store these pieces of information together, right? And so let's change this and save our features. And what are we going to do? We're going to say, you know what? The features it has are air conditioning or features.breaks. Now, what's happening here? The reason this works, I'm going to come at this out for a second so we don't have to follow those, is because air conditioning and breaks have two different values and it's using that essential or because what are enumerations but just integers, right? And this may be confusing because if we look at this new features value, let's uh, write line features. Let's run this real quick. You're going to see that we're losing the value of breaks here. Well, that's weird. Why would that matter, right? The reason is that our numbers here aren't really dealing with them as individual values. So I think of binary often in the case of enumerations as a way to really keep a bit at a time. And so C Sharp allows us to do this by putting an attribute called flags. And flags is going to let us do this. But we have to assign the different bit values here, right? Three wasn't reasonable here because three in binary would be the same as one and two. So we were getting trying to assign air conditioning, and we were also assigning both of these as being true as well. And so by using features, and let's go ahead and make this zero, so that when it's completely empty, there are no features, or you could eliminate it entirely. Then what can we do? We can have some features that are set, and then we can use those bitwise operators again. And so now I can do a test if features and features dot breaks, right? Essentially, we're saying this value is going to be five. If five and four equal features dot breaks, then we can write line as breaks. And so this is essentially doing that test to make sure that we have breaks, that the oring of these two is extracting the value of breaks out of our value, because we're using that bitwise operator to do that. It's saying that that bit, the one bit, is going to be true in both features.breaks, which of course it is, and our features object that has one or more features put in it. And if we run it, we'll see that we're not only getting that it knows about both values, that this enumeration can store more than one value, that flags is telling us about that. And then we can actually test it for our own code where we want to do something using those values. 
This confused me a long time because I'm doing or here in order to collect the values and I'm doing and to extract the value, which seemed awfully opposite for me for a long time. But what we're really looking at is let's write features, right? What is this coming out of here? We need to cast it to an int because underneath it, it is an int. Let's run this one last time just so we can see this that the value of our features in binary is 101, right? Because what? We have brakes that are the first, radio the second, and air conditioning the third value. In fact, we could say OB just to be really clear about what is actually happening here, right? We're setting each of these to their own bits. That's what's really happening, is that each one of these, by using those powers of two, are containing one exact bit inside of the number. And so even though for traditional math, where you're just dealing with integer numbers or hexadecimal numbers, you may not want to think about it, but these bitwise operators are really important when you start to think about how you want to store information. Because this is a lot easier to discern this and grow it rather than have something like in a database field, four different Boolean columns in your database. This is a way to be able to extract those values and see whether one of these individual values is working. A lot of little concepts here, but I hope uh, you were able to get a little bit out of it. This is a concept that confused me going way, way back. And I'm uh, hopefully I cleared it up for a couple of you. This has been Sean Willemuth. I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.